Well, hey, are you ready? Are you ready for the showdown between the LCD PVM and the CRT PVM? We're finally gonna get into it today, so let's go ahead now and get started. All right, let's start by going through some of the amazing hardware we're gonna to need to do today's demonstration. First off, let's talk about our monitors. We've got the Sony PVM LMD 1420. That's a 13 inch LCD display and I've gone through and refurbished it. We've done a whole series on it. And then we've got two CRTs we're gonna be hooking up next to this. First off up top, we've got a Sony PVM 8041Q. It's got a lower line count of 250 TV lines, but it does RGB. And then below that, we've got a Sony PVM 1350, which is also on the lower line count. I believe it has 500 lines of resolution, but it also supports RGB. And then in order to power those three machines, we're gonna need three power supply uh, cables here. These are the standard three prong cables here in the United States. And then to wire up our loop, we're actually gonna need a total of eight BNC cables. That way we can wire up all three monitors simultaneously. And I'll show you how to set that up here on each monitor. And then finally, our source monitor will be getting RGB using this adapter, which is a SCART to BNC and C adapter. And then we're gonna use the Sega Genesis, which is just not your normal Sega Genesis, this one has been modified with the triple bypass kit. And so it has also been recapped and it's ready to go. It's in good shape. And then we'll use some uh, different testing on the software there through the EverDrive. And then finally, we'll use a adapter from Insurrection Industries that will allow us to get RGB and sync out of our multi out from the back of the Genesis. And then I do have a standard power supply for that Genesis. And that is all this amazing hardware that we're gonna need. Uh, we will need a good stable source of power to be able to power all these machines. So now let's go ahead, we're gonna flip around the monitors and we're gonna start hooking everything up. Well, I just realized that uh, the setup I've gone through is not gonna work. And that's because my Sony PVM 1350, I forgot it only has an input for RGB. It does not have a daisy chain out. So in order to do this setup properly, we're gonna to need to swap that monitor out and put in something else. Uh, the 8041Q is the same way. It only has RGB in, it doesn't have a daisy chain out for that line. So we could not use these two monitors together to get daisy chain really anything without adding some more hardware. All right, now let's kick it up a little bit more with this uh, high resolution Sony PVM. And now we had to move up to a Sony PVM 14M4U because that will allow us to do daisy chains out. And that way we can hook up our SCART adapter into the PVM first, then out to this LCD PVM, and then on up to our 8041Q mini monitor. Let's get ready now to hook up our adapter here. We're gonna go red, green, blue, and then sync. Now we need to go through and hook up our outputs and we will put all these into the next monitor in the daisy chain. My PVM over here is in a different build out so I need to go red on the bottom, blue in the middle and green on the top. Now I'll connect the four remaining BNC cables from the outputs over here up to the corresponding inputs on our eight inch monitor. All right, now we can finally move on to connecting our SCART adapter here and we can get our video signal ready from our Sega Genesis. We'll also plug in our power supply. That will make a total of four power supplies. As ridiculous as all this is, it's still probably easier to power up than the uh, Sega Genesis combined with the Sega CD and the 32X. 
try to go ahead and turn everything on. And we've obviously got something not connected correctly, right? We're red up here. I feel like we're missing something here. Let's see. All right, well, thankfully I got it working. It took a little bit of uh, troubleshooting, but what I figured out was one of my cables with BNC connectors on it had gone bad. It's not any good anymore, so it was shorting out or losing connection. And when it did that, it would cause a problem between the last two chains in the loop here. So now we've got it all figured out. Everything's working good. Let's take a look at some gameplay footage here on the Sega Genesis. Just looking at this side by side here, I can almost tell there's a variable lag on this right hand display on the LCD. You can just see how it lags behind a little bit on screen. I feel like the LCD screen definitely looked a lot better when it was by itself. Now that you have it hooked up in sequence here with a couple of PVMs, even though all the colors aren't matching, you can definitely for sure tell it's continuing to lag behind the other video signals, and that's just with your eye. Um, and again, when you're, when you're sitting here looking at the screens right next to a CRT, it's just not nearly as robust a picture. I'm gonna make this comparison a little bit more practical. So we've removed the eight inch PVM from the equation. Now we just have the 14 inch LCD and then the 14 inch CRT. And we're gonna look at the 240B test suite so we can compare some interesting things and see how the contrasting styles of these two monitors match. Now we've already gone through and looked at the gameplay and definitely the lag issues that plague this LCD monitor, but some of the things that you will want to consider when you're just comparing these two uh, monitors is there's going to be issues that you'll naturally have just with the CRT video format specifically in geometry that you don't have over here in the LCD screen. For example, you're not going to have any of the uh, issues in your corner geometry or edge geometry and there also, also should be no convergence problems on the LCD screen. Whereas with this uh, CRT, you're going to suffer from all things like uh, possibilities of having convergence issues, geometry issues, and other yoke and deflection issues and magnetism problems. So that is one benefit, even though all of the downfalls of the LCD, it definitely has the benefit of having um, a crispier as far as geometric uh, shapes are concerned. It's, it's going to have a better image. Uh, than the CRT technically. Now maybe some of you like the CRT's look. I personally do. One of the other things to consider is the color matching. Our red colors up here is not nearly as intense as our other colors and that's because our tube is a little bit tired on this red line. So eventually in the future we may try to rejuvenate that red line but you can tell how it's not as bright and also if you go under that green is way more in the shaded areas you can see whereas like over here you're going to have uh, the ability to see pretty much everything evenly because it's not going to have a color go out the way that a color would go out or dim on for example this crt screen i think the green is the most intense on the crt the, the blue is pretty close to 100 percent, but the red's definitely a little bit weaker that's pretty much all the comparison I wanted to go over quickly in the 240p test suite. So now we're going to move on and change this up and we're going to get into some 480i gaming with a different console. Now we've switched things over to run a PlayStation 2. It's a very good tester for things like 480i and that's what we're going to be testing for today. And it's set 
for RGB. And so we've got a SCART cable here that's connected now. And now we're just gonna run through and uh, test these displays with some 480i gameplay. While the 480i game demo plays, I'm going to discuss a few things about this comparison. First off, let's talk about the lag. The lag on the LCD monitor is awful. In case you missed it, Lewis and I had Bob from Retro RGB on the Cathode Ray podcast. Bob helped us use a time sleuth to test the lag and the resolutions for the LCD PVM, and the screen had variable lag from 60 to 80 milliseconds on average. The other issue with the monitor is that it does not accept resolutions over 480i, so just like the majority of CRT PVMs, this LCD is an analog-only display. If you want to see the demonstration we did with Bob, please use this link to get to that episode. I'd like to mention some things on the CRT that I'm using, that being the PVM14M4U. I discussed earlier how the monitor has a weaker red line in the electron gun. I feel that you can tell a much bigger difference in the colors when comparing the 480i signals between the CRT and LCD. You can really tell that the CRT is probably 10% lower on the red than any other colors, causing a bit too much green and blue to show through thus causing the white balance to be off. All right, so what are the positive aspects of this LCD PVM? Unfortunately, there's no practical gaming use for this monitor, but we must remember that these monitors were never engineered for gaming in the first place. The LCD PVM weighs a lot less than the CRT monitors and would have been a lot easier to move around between projects. The LCD monitor was sold as a replacement to the 8 and 9 inch field PVM monitors. This provided an upsell benefit of a larger viewing display. Also the image of the LCD would not suffer from the convergence, color and geometry issues that affect CRT technology. This ultimately leads to the lower maintenance costs for the LCD over the CRT. Finally, the display lag was not really an issue for the industries purchasing these types of monitors. So latency was not an important factor for the professional and broadcast video monitor industry in the mid 2000s. It's really a shame the monitor has the lag because that alone limits the uses for it. However, I personally will still cherish this Sony PVM for what it is and that is a piece of display technology history. It represents early LCD technology that undoubtedly got better over the coming decade, but most gamers may decide to just skip this decade in display technology and stick with either a CRT or use a modern LCD or OLED with low latency. I will store this in my collection and move on to the next display. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and feel free to comment. If you like content on retro technologies, including CRTs, then do please subscribe to this channel as I regularly make content on that subject. I want to say thank you to all the supporters of this channel on Patreon. If you need consultation on repairs on a CRT, then please check out the Patreon page. I'll pin it in a comment below. We have exclusive content on Patreon and a private discord with some of the biggest CRT fanatics you'll find anywhere. Your support of the channel also helps me document all these amazing technological relics. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time with some more retro content.